welcome back hello everybody welcome to my channel if you uh, would like to um, like push the like <laughs> if you'd like to subscribe please subscribe you um, are just wonderful well this is appalling in my book this is appalling Jackson politician makes fun of a teenage victim sexual assault with racial slur after it came to light that she had made a racial statement against a Republican official and harsh comments about a kid who had been the victim of sexual assault a Democrat candidate for the precinct 2 seat of the Tarrant County Commission stirred up controversy during a private conversation on Facebook, Republican candidate Alisa Simmons, who is running against Democrat candidate Andy Nugent for the seat, made some disturbing comments about a young girl named Journey, who had been taken away from her mother by Child Protective Services, CPS, due to some questionable allegations. The second individual asked Simons why she had posted disparaging words about Journey and her mother, Brianna Bauckham. I think that's the way you would pronounce that. B-A-U-C-U-M. Bauckham. Bauckham. While they were engaged in the private conversation on Facebook. In her letter of response, Simons, who was also the chairman of the NAACP chapter in her area, stated, Miss Bauckham deserves every bit of ch blank t she gets for disclosing confidential cps documents and i spoke with carmesha the caseworker on the case and still don't give a damn about it thank goodness the worst that happened to her daughter was a sexual assault in foster care it's possible that she will turn up dead what a horrible thing to say this justice for journey bull s blank blank t from her followers destroyed my campaign get in touch with tender holt that white trash won't assist her or her dummy of a kid that's for sure every day children are kidnapped oh my goodness She gives off the air of being really a luring woman, doesn't she? Oh, what kind of a person is she? Simons made a reference to Tony Tenderholt in her statement. Tenderholt was a candidate that defeated Simons in the contest to represent Texas District 94 in Congress in the year 2020. It would appear that she is still resentful enough about her defeat to have made racial comments about the individual. But her comments regarding Brianna and Journey Balcom, who both happened to be black, were particularly offensive. This is especially true when considered in light of the real circumstances of the case, which appeared to have nothing in common with what Simon stated in her message. According to the Dallas Observer, the information that was sent to Child Protective Services uh, concerning the situation was misleading, which means that the Balcom lost her daughter for something that she was not responsible for. According to the report, Balcom, who is now 29 years old and survived the foster care system in Texas herself, has not been allowed to reside with her daughter since CPS ordered her to give up custody on August 28, 2019. Neither Child Protective Services, CPS, nor the police at the University of Texas at Arlington, where Balcom was a student, is a student, have closed the case, barring Balcom's mother from seeing her daughter again. Oh my God. Nugent was quite critical of Simon's disrespectful and offensive comments regarding race. The residents of Tarrant County Commissioner Precinct 2 deserve to have elected representatives who uphold the highest standards 
of honesty and dignity. After reading my opponent's vulgar and racist words, I found myself in a state of profound distress. In his words, someone who has run for office as many times as Elisa Simons should know better, regardless of the circumstances which a statement was made. Oh my God. This preceding is summon, summonary of an article that originally appeared on Red State. Oh, that is just... How could anybody make comments like that against a child that has been raped? I mean, dear God. What if it was her child? Would she still say the same thing? Mm. My goodness. My, oh my, oh my. Boy, you just never know, do you? Alright, let's go to the next one. And, uh, I gotta move this over a little bit. And find out where I'm at. Uh, now, I am sure that this is one of the videos that I, I need to replace about Kamala Harris. I hope I'm not doubling up here. Um, but I don't think so. Uh, the Vice President Kamala Harris has once again made a dubious assumption regarding her life story which can be easily disproved by her critics. The idea that Harris was a liberal activist even when she was a child teenager was easily debunked by skeptics who simply needed a calendar and a few seconds on Google. The farm workers movement was a huge part of my youth, Harris says in an interview with The Nation that was published on Monday in honor of Labor Day. The interview was released in commemoration of the holiday. She was embarrassed to declare, I didn't start eating grapes until my 20s because it seemed so quaint. Now, I'm not sure if this one got published or not, so forgive me if this is a double take. But I looked through my videos and I could not see uh, where it uh, had taken because I deleted it. So, but uh, anyway, Harris stated, and this is a he and not a she, again. Harris stated that he had actually never eaten a grape in his life. When I tried a grape for the very first time, I remember thinking, wow, this is excellent in every way. It was drilled into my head from a young age to never, under any circumstances, cross a picket line. Hmm. And didn't I say what's that got to do with eating grapes? If this is a double take, I will delete it out. Harris was referring to a grape boycott established by union officials, reaction to labor de demonstrations, Obey, the boycott's dates did not line up with the vice president's remarks. And that's A-L-B-E-I-T. Elbate? Albit? Something like that. <laughs> From 1984 until 2000, United Farm Workers apparently sponsored a great boycott, as reported by the New York Post. If Harris had consumed even one grape while she was in her 20s, she would have not have followed her previous statement and participated in the boycott. Even before the grape affair, Harris had been found guilty of making claims that was not true. She claimed in December 2020 that her family had celebrated Kwanzaa annually ever since she was a tiny child. However, the chronology, chronology showed that the ethnic festival hadn't even been established yet when she was born, therefore her statements are highly implausible. In an interview from February of this year, Harris admitted that she used weed in college to the tunes of Tupac and Snoop Dogg. However, a cursory examination of the time frame found that the music musicians in question did not record their songs till after Harris had completed her education. Many people on the right have pointed out that Harris has an odd habit repeating words and phrases while she is giving formal speeches. 
They have also poked fun of his habit. The proceeding is a summary of an article that originally appeared on American Examiner News. Oh, well, I don't know what to say. I really don't. Well, I did what I told you I was going to do. And I can't really say I still uh, understand it. But I was shocked to find out that um, somebody is involved in it. Now, let's see what I can find here. Um, I don't know how far over I can go. Now, where is this article from? Now, I've got to do, go this way, I think. Let's put that out a little bit. Uh, I don't quite still understand this part of it. And I'm not sure that anybody else will either. But I thought it was interesting when I ran across somebody else's name involved. Close to a full Q&A, non, a Q&A non, Embrace shares con conspiracy supporters give finger salute. Now, I can't move that over. Let's see if I can get this over a little bit more. So I can spread this out. Because this is kind of a... Uh, well, come on here. Sometimes this wanna work, wants to work and sometimes it don't. Now, I don't want to lose this video. <sighs> come on. You get right in that little tiny borderline so you can stretch stuff out well, I finally made it there anyway. <clears throat> the finger salute. Let's go on down. And let's uh, move this over just a hair. And it involves... Here we are. Trump's embrace. Trump. Embrace of QAnon. Q-A-N-O-N, which he has never disavowed, has ramped up in this last month. Trump has directly shared Q-A-N-O-N post to his Truth social account, which has millions of followers. Q-A-N-O-N, Q -A -N -O -N, influencers are celebrating his deepening embrace of the baseless far-right conspiracy theory. Former President Donald Trump Reshared a video on his Truth Social platform on Thursday night filled with numerous far right QAnon conspiracy images as well as references to Satanists and pedophiles. The over a minute long video contains a series of memes, M E M E S, memes that show Trump alongside. QAnon slogans and includes vague threats of retribution against his opponents. Every last traitor, liar, leaker, and enemy will pay for what they've done to America, reads the text in front of one excuse me, image of Trump. Trump's resharing of the video, called a retruth on the site, is one of the most overt, overt promotions of QAnon that the former president has yet done and comes less than a week after his appearance at a political rally in Ohio that appeared to further his connection with the conspiracy movement. Trump's speech at the Ohio rally on Saturday made headlines after a large group of tenants outstretched their arms, pointed their index fingers toward the former president in action that Many online quickly compared to a Nazi salute just before the strange display from the crowd. Trump's rally had played a song that was nearly identical to the theme song of the far right QAnon Q -A -N -O -N, conspiracy movement and the one finger gestures appeared to be reaction to hearing the track. 
The scene at the Ohio rally was the latest in a series of bizarre actions over the last few weeks that signal Trump's increasing embrace of QAnon, the far-right movement tied to multiple acts of violence that believes he is a savior figure and which he has refused to disown, instead appearing to inch closer to endorsing its wild beliefs. <clears throat> Trump has gone as close to full QAnon as we've seen him to go to date, Jared Holt. Jared Holt, a senior researcher manager at the Institute of Strategic Dialogue, told the insider, I believe that this would be an error to grant any plausible deniability. Story continues. I don't know if I'll be able to finish this or not. Am I going to get to continue it or am I not? Oh, I guess I'm not going to get to continue it because it's not going anywhere. <clears throat> but, uh, wow. Wow. No words. I have no words. You get your hopes up and you believe and then all of a sudden they're crushed. Just unbelievable. I have no words. No, I have no words. Well, that's it for me tonight. Yeah. It is going on 11.38 p.m. here now. And um, I've got some other things I want to look up and I want to read. So I'm going to say goodnight, everybody. Boy, you just never know, do you? You never know. Uh, I'm not going to say anything. I'll keep my thoughts to myself. I have no words. But God bless you. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Love your loved ones. Love your neighbors. Help somebody out. It makes you feel good in here. Good night.